Hi, my name is Adam Gershowitz. I'm a producer for Rift Planes of Talara, and you're watching Realm. So one of the things to note during this demo is you're going to see a number of loading screens. Unfortunately, that's because we're jumping mass uh, locations. As you're playing in the game world normally, you wouldn't see any load screens. It's a continuous world, unless you're entering an instance, which we'll show you a little bit later. So here we are in uh, Sanctum. Uh, this is Tavro Plaza. Sanctum is the base capital city or headquarters of the Guardians. Uh, they've kind of retreated away from Port Sion um, and re-established themselves here in the edge of the Silverwood. Uh, Anthony's going to go ahead and run into the Sanctum here, Sanctum of Vigil, uh, and show you a little bit more of the, uh, the city here. So the cities act as hubs, just like any other MMO city would. Players will find all the things that they've come to expect in MMO, uh, social environment, mail, banking, crafting, uh, looking for group tools, all of those types of things. In addition, they'll get a chance to interact with the various heroes uh, of their order. This is Cyril. Uh, Cyril is the head of the Guardian Order, um, as he's flanked on either side by other kind of iconic heroes, which you'll see as you progress through the game at key events as the game progresses and unfolds. So. We'll switch to another combat area real quick and show you guys a little bit more about combat and classes. Come on, now. There we go. All right, so the next zone we're going to hop to on our tour here is Glomwood. Once again, this is a Guardian-centric tour, so we're basically showing zones that the Guardians will kind of progress through. This is a low-mid-level zone. Uh, right now, the Glomwood, as you can see, is a different style from the Shadowlands. Shadowlands is a very bleak, kind of supernatural area because it's so close to the edge of death. Uh, however, Glomwood is a kind of mysterious and spooky forest. Uh, there are a variety of different zones within the game, each with its own visual look and distinct uh, personality and environments as well. So Anthony's just going to play through this area just a little bit. Um, I think he is playing as Chloromancer and Stormcaller. All right. So one of the great things about uh, Rift is the fact that the choice is in the player's hands. So Anthony's playing one of our mage callings. Uh, there are four callings for players to choose from, warriors, mages, clerics, and rogues. The calling is kind of a overarching wrapper for all the choices the player can make. In this particular case, he has a chloromancer, which is a working name, and a, uh, a storm caller soul equipped. Each one of these souls represents a unique kind of combinations of abilities and different actions the player can take. So in this particular case, the Stormcaller is all about area effect damage, uh, overtime effects, and electricity and air magic. Uh, the Chloromancer is added in for a bit of a earth magic or life magic, uh, allowing them to poison foes. The big thing about the Chloromancer, though, is he's a non-standard mage. It'll allow the player to heal himself and his group as well. Um, he kind of works by siphoning energy off of other opponents or dealing damage to other opponents to heal his allies. So this isn't necessarily the best solo spec, so I'm going to have Anthony change real quick. So what we see here is the soul attunement window. As I mentioned before, uh, Rift is all about choice. Each one of the callings has a variety of different options available. So he's going to go ahead and kill this monster real quick. And why don't you use some special GM power so we don't get interrupted again. <laughs> and we can show you guys a little bit of the soul attunement system. That'll be active in the live game. Yes, yes. Yeah. At any time, you can go ahead and pause the game. Don't have to worry about it. Uh, what we actually did is made ourselves invisible for the time being. So as you can see, he has a, he's, he's picked a little Stormcaller, Chloromancer, and Dominator. This is really what we would refer to as a group build. Uh, it's a more group support build that you take into a raid or a dungeon because you've got a bit of healing. The Dominator brings some uh, crowd control and debuffs to the table. And the Stormcaller allows you to put out a little damage when you're not keeping your allies up. But in a solo situation, we'd want to switch around. So what he's going to do here is switch his role to a Pyromancer Warlock. Now, um, as you can see, he's doing this on the fly. Uh, players will be able to switch their roles whenever they'd like um, once they've unlocked them. Each one of the roles allows you to customize out the soul trees for each soul. So as I mentioned before, each one of these is a distinct class. We have the Warlock, the Pyromancer, and the Elementalist. Each one has its own unique soul tree. Soul trees are whoop, split up into two parts. Uh, the top part is what we call the branches, where players can spend their soul points they gain as they level for unique abilities and passive traits that improve their character. Automatically as they do this, it increases the soul level and unlocks the lower area, or what we call the root. 
This unlocks kind of the core abilities of the class that we ensure that everybody gets. It's kind of the core power base and ability base of the character. As you can see, just from this alone, we've shown six different possible souls uh, of a total of eight. This gives players, ooh, I want to say somewhere around uh, 500 plus options for how they want to customize their character for any particular day, time, or role. So why don't we get back into the game and play a little more.